In 2011, together with some colleagues, we presented a blueprint for a new fisheries management instrument that we call RTI. Since then, we have developing this concept further. This instrument replaces traditional catch or landings quotas and days at sea limitations. In our system, each fisher gets an annual allocation of fishing impact credits called RTIs, let's say 200 RTIs per year. Fishers can fish when and where they want, spending RTIs according to a color-coded tariff map until their RTI account is empty. For example, in some areas they fish at a rate of 5 RTIs per day, while in other areas they pay only 0.1 RTI per day. Managers set the tariffs according to agreed fishing mortality targets of commercial species, making use of historical and real-time spatial information on catch rates. The tariffs would be set high in areas where the impact on the stock is high and tariffs would be low where the impact is low. In this paper, we explore how the system works at the nuts and bolts level, because the actual operation was not yet clear from the initial blueprint. This type of study by necessity precedes any MSE type data conditioned simulation. At the same time, we address some pertinent questions that were raised by stakeholders. The first question asks how the system responds if fishers achieve higher catches than anticipated. This could arise, for example, if all fishers go to the red areas, or the areas where they know their target species is abundant. Or it could arise if fishers achieve higher catchability or efficiency because they are no longer constrained by any catch or landings quota. The second question asks what the consequences would be if fishers report their catches to other grid cells than where they were caught. This question arises from the feature that we envisage that the tariffs would be updated based on real-time information, for example at a weekly timescale. CPUE information from the industry would be used for this. This then, of course, provides an incentive for misreporting. The third question addresses how the RTI system deals with mixed fisheries issues and the so-called choke species. I will come back to that topic later. We use an individual-based simulation model. This is a parsimonious choice to explore the operational challenges to the RTI system, as it allows us to study how system-level properties emerge from the behavior of individuals, and how the system subsequently affects individual behavior. We are able to include variability among individuals, local interactions, and adaptation of individual behavior relative to the changing environment. The fictive population is distributed over 100 cells and these cells have color-coded tariffs in RTIs per day. Simulations run through days within weeks within years. Each day, each of 100 fishers fishes according to a simulation scenario provided that he has RTIs left. Two processes are of particular importance. Each week, the cell tariffs will be updated based on the cell's CPOE of the week before. And each year, the realized harvest rate of the previous year will be evaluated against the target. Our harvest control rule prescribes that if the realized harvest rate deviates by more than 10% from the target, the boundaries between the tariff levels 
will be adjusted up or down accordingly. Let us look at the first question. The first thing to note here is that the target harvest rate is represented by the straight dashed line bounded by the 10% deviations represented by the stippled lines. The black solid curve is the actual harvest rate. Clearly, it started too high, but within a few years it was brought down to within the accepted bounds. After that, it fluctuates around the target with a few excursions outside the agreed bounds. Adaptive management succeeds. The white circles are a representation of the stringency of the tariffs. This is the quantity that is adapted by the annual harvest control rule, if required. The shades of grey represent the weekly catches by all fishers. Fishing terminates around week 30 because all fishers have exhausted their RTIs. The result of the previous picture can be robustly replicated. The second question deals with misreporting. The objection to our system was raised that fishers experience an incentive to misreport high catches to other cells, thereby artificially lowering the tariffs of cells with high abundance, where they can subsequently fish at cheaper rates and thus continue fishing longer before their RTI account is exhausted. In this particular scenario, with six misreporting fishers and six equivalent fishers reporting correctly, the misreporting fishers achieved on average 1.4 times higher catches than the correctly reporting fishers. Among 10 simulation runs, this advantage ranged from 1 to 1.8. So indeed, there is an incentive to misreport. Nevertheless, at the stock level, the RTI system succeeds in bringing the harvest rate, which is initially too high, to within the accepted bounds by adapting the stringency of the tariffs. Management of the stock is not jeopardized by misreporting. Note, however, that the tariffs become more stringent for everybody, for misreporting as well as for compliant fishers. Again, this result can be robustly replicated. The RTI Fisheries Management Instrument was actually designed to deal with the mixed fisheries problem and the so-called choke species, which I will explain in a few slides. Imagine two species, species A and species B each with its respective quota under traditional management. In this case, more effort is required to fish up the quota for species B than is required to exhaust the quota for species A. Under catch quota, that would imply that fishers have to stop fishing when the quota of species A has been reached and thus forego catches of species B for which they have a legal entitlement. Species A chokes the fishery. The same would happen if an effort regime would be in place restricting fishing to accommodate the choke species. On the landings quota, fishers are allowed to continue fishing until they have fully caught the quota of species B. They will have to discard the over quota catches of species A because they are not allowed to land them. Both situations are undesirable. The ideal situation would be one where both species are fished up precisely to the level corresponding to the agreed target. 
Here our simulations come in again. We simulated a mixed fishery where the species managed by RTI is the choke species. We simulate two métiers. Some fishers target the choke species and other fishers target a different species and avoid the choke species. This would mean that the choke targeting fishers would mainly go to the red areas. There the expected daily catches of their target species are high, but they have to pay 5 RTIs per day. This way they will exhaust their RTI allocation at a fast rate and will effectively have only few fishing days available. On the other hand, the choke avoiding fishers would avoid the choke species in the yellow and white areas where the abundance of other species may be high and where they pay only a fraction of one RTI per day, effectively allowing them to fish almost year-round. We therefore expect that the desirable outcome can be approached. Indeed, results of 100 simulation runs show that the choke targeting fishers had on average only 65 days available before they ran out of RTIs. By contrast, those fishers who avoided the choke species and targeted something else had fishing seasons ranging from 129 to 300, which was the maximum in our simulations, with an average of 248 days. Both métiers can coexist. Fishers are allowed to target the choke species and accept to be restricted in fishing days. But those who target other species do not experience any choking and can fish throughout a much bigger part of the year. The conclusions of this study are that adaptive RTI can manage the stock with regards to targets in the face of fishing tactics resulting in higher than anticipated catches. Likewise in the face of an incentive for misreporting. But note that here interfisher conflicts may arise. The final conclusion is that the harvest rate of a choke species can be controlled while simultaneously allowing fishing opportunity for other species. We thank you very much for your attention.